Welcome to the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. We're going to explore ways to sharpen our diagnostic skills, find learning resources, and hear from experts in the automotive field. All right, hello, automotive world. This is the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. My name is Sean Tipping. I'll be your host today. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about module programming. Again, on a Ford, we talked about one recently, uh, the TCM in the Ford Fiesta, Ford uh, Focus. Uh, today is going to be the Smart Junction Box or the GEM Module or Body Control Module. That depends on who you ask what the term is. I'll probably refer to it as the BCM uh, or the Smart Junction Box. Service Info calls it the Smart Junction Box. Uh, a lot of people, though, call it the Body Control Module or BCM because that's essentially the functions. But, uh, of course, as I'm sure you know, <laughs> names for modules change depending on the manufacturer and, you know, what you work on the most. So it, it can be really tough <laughs> just to identify <laughs> what a module is because there's so many different terms for the same module across brands but I want to make it clear what we're talking about today again this is a Ford and this is actually going to be in a pickup truck so this will be an F-150 the particular one that I'm going to focus in on is an F-250 Super Duty but this smart junction box or BCM is located in the same spot and really does the same functions in both trucks but the exact vehicle that I am going to reference uh, you know, I did one this week and I thought it would be a good topic for the podcast was a 2010 Ford F-250 Super Duty with the diesel engine. The engine doesn't matter so much. And the issue was, uh, I was actually called out for a diagnosis originally because this truck did not start and they had pegged the instrument cluster as the problem as to why this would not start and the reason being is they had multiple modules in the or I'm sorry they had multiple codes in multiple modules that referred to lack of communication with the instrument cluster all right so they had done their own diagnosis but they just weren't sure for whatever reason, and I do a lot of work for this shop, so they called me and said, hey, can you just confirm this before we order up an instrument cluster that this is what's going on? I think when they a lot of shops or a lot of techs get you know communication codes, they're not 100% sure. It's tough, it's tough to make a call, and it really is. you got to be sure that you know everything else is present for that module to talk to make sure that it actually can. Uh, and and uh, can obviously be a challenging thing, but that's, that's part of what we do. Uh, we figure that out so that we can call the right part. That's what we do. So anyways, this isn't so much about the diagnostic. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, it's more about the programming of these specific control modules on these kind of trucks, the F-150s and the F-250s. There's some steps that you really do need to follow and be aware of ahead of time so that you avoid trouble. And that's where we're going with this, but I'm going to just walk you through how I got to the actual programming. So the diagnosis will be fairly quick. So I get there and I hook up my scan tool and let's just check some codes. Let's see. And I verified, yes, this did not start. Didn't even crank. Uh, there's a couple lights that come on the dash when I key it up, but not the entire dash. You know, usually you have a series of lights and backlights and the gauges move and none of that really happened. I had a security light and I think one other light that came on. It just didn't seem like everything was turning on. I'm just used to seeing you know Ford dashboards or really any vehicle when you key it up there should be a lot of lights and this just seemed to be lacking in that so that's my first thing that I notice so I hook up the launch Diagon 4 uh, it's just quick simple easy to pull out and I, I will say with this tool you can I'm sure this is probably the case with all launches but to be honest this is the only launch scan tool that I own apparently the software is similar on others I can't speak to that 100% anyways what I really like about this tool and why I like pulling this out for quick code checks and multiple modules is the tool itself is really fast you 
it, it'll connect to the vehicle, it'll auto ID it, you hit health report once it's auto ID would it, and it goes through every single module very quickly, I might add, on, on most vehicles. I've had a couple that were slow, but on this one it just blasted through all the modules, and it's going to tell you who has codes and who doesn't. Now, multiple scansels will do this, you know, Autel will do this and, and everything else. Here's one thing I like about the launch that the Autel doesn't necessarily do. In an Autel, if there's a module that it tries to talk to and it can't, it kind of just skips over it and it doesn't show you that module. You got to really be watching the auto scan, it's called an Autel, and it'll, it'll just sort of blanket off the screen and you, you don't see that module. In the launch, in a lot of cases, it's going to say, not equipped if it can't talk to that particular control module. So once it's done with its health report, which is going through all the control modules, you can see what it at least attempted to talk to, and it'll say not equipped again, if it's an optional module, but sometimes you know like, okay, the engine control module is not optional and it says not equipped, well, there's communication issues there. Um, the other thing is that I like about the launch is once you're done with the health report, it'll show you every th single module that it went through and you can go into individual ones, but you can hit fault report and it will pull up only the modules with codes and you click on each module and it just pulls up the codes. So you're not wasting time going into a module, checking codes, going back out, which is what you have to do with the Autel, at least the one that I use. So anyways, the, the whole point of this is the launch, the Diagon 4, I mean this thing's only 700 bucks, if that, um, is really, really fast. You just want to see the big, you know, the quick picture of what's going on with this vehicle. Where are the codes? What can I talk to? You know, what's awake on this vehicle? And that was my question here. Obviously they said they had communication codes in multiple modules relating to the instrument cluster. So I want to see what's going on. And I hook up the scan tool and I do this and I run through it and there are a lot of codes. And again, this vehicle doesn't start. Instrument cluster seems weird. Um, I can actually talk to the instrument cluster though. So that's one thing right away. Okay, at least I can communicate with this thing. But there are codes in multiple modules saying that it they cannot talk with the instrument cluster. Now there's some other codes in here, nothing that really is alarming or that really uh, relates to what I'm dealing with or at least I, you know, think so at the time. You know, you never want to discount codes too much cuz that can come back and bite you. I've, I've experienced that before. But uh, the ones that I really see that are pertaining to my issue do relate to communication with the instrument cluster. So again, I can talk to the instrument cluster. So what I did was uh, I actually went into the data stream of the instrument cluster. Because again, when I keyed it up, it seemed like there just wasn't enough happening when I turn this thing on. Something must have been happening because I can talk to it and there's some lights on the dash, but just not enough. So when I go into the data stream, you can actually see, well, you can see a lot of data PIDs, but the two that I was looking at that I wanted to see you know, what they registered was battery voltage and I think it said ignition voltage. And these are just showing what is the voltage to this control module. So obviously this control module, just pretty much any control module should have a constant battery feed and then a switched ignition. Some don't use a switched ignition, some use a wake up on a CAN circuit, but this one uses a switched ignition and a constant battery feed. Well, the constant battery feed, it's a data PID that you can read in the scan tool, read zero volts, okay? And I, I, I know that there is system voltage, the battery is not dead in this thing, actually two batteries, but the the system voltage is, you know, near 12.6, it is not zero. And I can look at the ignition voltage or the ignition wake up circuit, whatever you want to call it, and that was reading system voltage. So right away, that's what I've identified as my issue. So I want to look up a wiring diagram and see where does this thing get its constant battery voltage from. And so I look up the wiring diagram and there is a wire that comes from the smart junction box. You could call this a fuse panel if you wanted to because it's kind of what it is. This is over on the driver's side kick panel, right side of the vehicle down by the, where the passenger's foot would be. You take that kick panel off and there's a fuse panel there. 
Well, it is a fuse panel. It's a fuse box, but it is also a control module. This is our smart junction box, they call it, or body control module. And this is going to operate a ton of features on the vehicle, and it's also going to send out power to a lot of different components, one of them being the instrument cluster. So there's a fuse for this constant power that is plugged right into this smart junction box. So that should be your first check. Let's make sure the fuse is not popped to this thing. And it's not. I think it was fuse 26. I should actually have that diagram up in front of me, but I don't right now. It doesn't really matter that much. Anyways, I checked that fuse and it checks out good. Okay, we've got power on that fuse. Lights up a test light on both sides. I don't have any corrosion on the pins or anything like that. Okay, cool. Well, let's test the wire that is going out of the fuse box or the smart junction box to the instrument cluster. I back probe it, you know, I'm keyed it up and you shouldn't actually even have to key it up in this point, but I have no power coming out of that smart junction box. So that's pretty straightforward for me right there. Um, because if I have power at the fuse, the next stop is the wire out of this connector and then up to the instrument cluster and I don't have anything there. I checked the connector, made sure there was good pin fit, there's no corrosion on it, it was plugged in all the way, and I still have nothing coming out of this smart junction block box. So and there's no there's nothing switched here. It's not like the module's missing a power or ground because that fuse is powered up. It's literally just a connection from that fuse to this circuit to go out to the instrument cluster. That's pretty much it for me. There's not a whole lot else I need to check. So I told them, you need a smart junction box. Oh, the, the other thing I did, just to verify, I did jumper power on this wire. So I jumped power to this wire, verified the instrument cluster actually did come on, and I got it to crank even at this point um, because the it recognizes security. And I, maybe I should bring up the point as to why it wasn't cranking. The security is built into the instrument cluster on this vehicle. So that way, if the instrument cluster is not awake, it can't communicate with the PCM to say, you know, that this is the correct key. Uh, it's paths is the term that Ford uses. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we go into the programming. So anyways, again, the, the diagnosis of this isn't the main portion that I wanted to cover. It was pretty straightforward. And again, these modules are really common to fail for a number of reasons. I, I see quite a few of them and that's why I'm talking about it because the tricky part can be on the programming side of these. Diagnosing them is relatively easy most of the time, but programming them is where you can run into some trouble. So anyways, they order a brand new smart junction box from Ford and they get it installed and they call me and they say, okay, come on out and program this thing. Now, here's where if you're going to program one of these control modules, these BCMs or smart junction boxes on the Ford F-150s, F-250s, the first thing that you should do if you're not familiar with it is read your service information. Super important here. Now, obviously that's important in a lot of different times throughout the day when you're working on vehicles but man it is really important on these vehicles specifically the reason being is there's a lot of extra stuff extra steps that you need to perform in order to correctly program these it's not just about having the uh, correct you know scan tool or pass through or uh, service subscription you know to ids it's not just about that there is also some other stuff that you need to perform that you need to have for these vehicles in order for these programmings to go correctly and that's what I really want to talk about today is kind of the hurdles that you need to be aware of before you get into programming one of these so that it can be done correctly because some of the calls I've gotten for these is someone that did try to program it and was not able to do so correctly because they weren't following the steps. They didn't read the service information. So read your service information because here's the deal. I'm going to give you the details on this one specific truck, this 2010 F-250, but depending on the model and the year that you're working on, there's a lot of variance in the details of what you need to do. Again, some of them similar, and some of the things I'm going to bring up kind of cover a lot of the year ranges around 2010 and up, but there's definitely variances depending on what you're working on. Uh, and I can talk to this just by doing a few of these. 
you know, you need certain things for one truck and not for the other. Anyways, the key is read your service information, but I'm going to go through, again, the programming on this one, some hurdles that you got to go over, and uh, what you might see, what you might want to know before you jump into saying, yeah, I can program one of these for you. There's some questions you got to ask if you're doing it for somebody else, or, you know, ask your customer because they're going to need some stuff before you can complete these programs. Here's how this looks on this 2010 F-250. So I come in and, well, maybe I should back up. I, I talked, because I knew what was coming, because I'd been there before, I talked to the shop owner about this. And I said, here's what you're gonna need. You need two functional keys for this vehicle. Okay, this is a PATS system. There's transponders in the keys. And we're gonna need two functional keys. In addition to that, you're going to need two functional remote transmitters, so uh, key fobs, basically. These are separate from the keys in this case for this particular vehicle, but you need two of those at least, and they need to be functional. You are also going to need four functional tire pressure monitor sensors. And I looked at the truck, I was like, there are sensors in the wheels. I can't tell you if they're functional. You guys can check that out if you want. I didn't actually have my... TPMS tool with me at the time I did the diagnosis, but you need to have that stuff in order for this to program. And I'll explain why as we go through this, but these are the kind of questions you want to ask beforehand before you jump in and say, yep, I can do it. It's this much money. You know, if you're quoting it to a customer, they may have to purchase some keys, some transmitters, some TPMS sensors. And in addition to that, you know, this is this is a decent process that you got to go through for these control modules. Maybe you want to charge a little extra for all the steps that you have to do. It's not just hitting some buttons on these ones. There's there's plenty of that, but you, you have to do a couple other steps as well. So he said, "Yeah, let me talk to the customer. We'll get we'll get you what you need." And these guys are pretty good at doing that. You know, they don't argue or complain about any of that stuff. If I say, "Hey, you got you need this stuff to make this happen," that's what they get for me. And and they did you know, good job on that. So anyways, now I come in to program this and here's the steps that you have to go through for this. So first off you hook up. And again, if you're programming, you want to have a voltage maintainer on the system. And you know, this is a diesel with two batteries It's you know, big truck, a big electrical system, and you got to have a quality voltage maintainer for something like this, something that can put out a hundred amps if necessary to keep a flat voltage. So uh, I'll put a, the link in the show notes, the one that I use. I did last time as well. It's through a AES Wave. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a great, great tool if you're programming. Uh, there are other options out there that you can get clean voltage supplies through, but uh, I'll just share the one that I use because it hasn't let me down. It's done a really good job for all the programming that I do. Anyways, I hook up my voltage maintainer so I have a clean voltage in the system while I'm programming. The next step, I'm going to pull out my laptop and my VCM2, and this is going to be IDS that we're going to use for this programming. Now, there is FJDS, which is the JBox version. I don't know if you can do body control module programming through FJDS. I'm not sure because I haven't used it a lot. So that is the J2534 version, which they have to be able to do PCM, TCM, but I don't know if Ford gives you BCM options, but I do know that IDS gives you that. This is factory Ford scan tool for this vehicle, and you are able to program the body control module through the IDS. So... We go in and we go into programmable module installation. And this is through the module programming tab. And when you do it this way, you are actually able to pull data from the original body control module or smart junction box before you go to program the new one, which makes things really easy because there's a configuration for this module particular to this vehicle because there's a ton of options for these trucks and if you pull them if you pull the information from the existing module if you can communicate with it which in this case I could it will actually it inhales and then it exhales that information into the new one so that's the way that I did it on this truck now let's say you don't have access to the old body control module. Let's say you can't communicate with the body control module. You can also do an as-built function 
which again, if you go into the module programming tab of IDS, as built is an option where it will look on the Ford server for the as built data for this particular application. And if you have an internet connection to your laptop, it will pull it from the Ford server. And I've done it that way too, and it works just fine. I just like pulling it from the existing module if I have it available to me, which in this case I did. So I pulled all the information and then it walks you through some steps and you get carpal tunnel from flipping the key from off to on so many times with Fords. If you've ever programmed a Ford, you know how that goes. Key on, key off, hit the blue tick mark. Um, it goes through its programming. This, this portion of it's really just button pushing and following directions and uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. I get the programming into the new control module. And now this is where it is important to read your service information, but also make sure that you're reading the steps on the scan tool itself. The programs in these vehicles that are built into the scan tools are actually really helpful and they provide you with a lot of the information that you need to know. A lot of the times that I mess up or I help someone else that messed up, it's just the fact that I didn't read something thoroughly enough or whoever I'm helping didn't read <laughs> something thoroughly enough. And so it's always a good idea to just read through things twice. Make sure you're not missing anything. Make sure you're actually performing all the steps. In this case, for these modules, it's important because here's what happens. Just about anybody can do what we've done so far as far as, you know, pressing some buttons and getting this thing programmed. It's, it's really not too complicated, and I wouldn't be talking about it if that's all we were doing. But what I run into is people get to that step, they program it, okay, cool. Now, here's where these trucks are kind of funny. If you just leave it at that point, and it'll say, you know, your module is programmed, but you have to do these additional steps. If you don't do these additional steps, you're going to have a dome light inside the vehicle. Okay, so this is the light that's on the top of the roof liner there. That is just going to flash slowly, consistently, as long as you have the key on, flash, flash, flash <laughs> until the end of time and it will not stop flashing and obviously for you know for the uh, customer the driver of the vehicle they are not going to be happy with that you can't send it out that way and that's what I get calls on you know if I get a call on one of these f-150s f-250s and they're like yeah the dome light is flashing consistently and we're not sure why I know exactly where I need to go I need to go finish the body control module programming that wasn't done correctly. So here are the steps that I do in this truck. Now again, there are variances depending on the year and the model, but this is what I had to do on this particular truck. So the first step that I had to go through was a PATS relearn. So this is passive anti-theft. This is Ford security and it wanted me to learn the new keys or I shouldn't say new keys, the keys for the vehicle. Now, the security info is stored in the instrument cluster on this one, so I may have actually been able to get by with just a PATS reset, but here's how this works. To access the security functions of this vehicle, um, and there are ways around this with certain tools, but I'm just, I've got IDS hooked up, so this is what I used. You go into the security functions of the vehicle, and it's going to make you wait for 10 minutes before you can actually get in and do anything. It gives you a 600 second timer. So I do my 10 minutes, and I get into the security functions, and I'm already in there, so I decide to erase all keys and program the ones that I have in front of me. That way I know I've got two good keys that are programmed to the vehicle. And again, these keys have transponders in the heads of the keys, and there is a, a halo that is around the lock cylinder so when you put the key in there it activates the chip through uh, electromagnetic waves transfers some data to the uh, immobilizer to say yep this is the right key so I go through I erase the keys then I program the two keys that I have and you have to have two keys if you're gonna do an erase keys on a Ford and program new ones you got to have two you can't just do this with one and there's tricks around this with tin foil and spare keys but you know, if you can get two keys, that's the way to do this. So I go through and I do that. Now, here's something that you want to remember for this, especially after modular replacement. And sometimes this is all you need to do. 
but in this case I did the keys anyways because I was already in there. There's another step within the security functions of pretty much any four that has paths, and that is called a parameter reset. Remember that because I've replaced PCMs where all you have to do is a parameter reset. People will say, oh, you got to do the keys. You don't always have to do the keys. In this case, I did because I had to, and I'm just like, well, let's just make sure they're programmed. But I've run into cases where I'm putting PCMs in Fords, and I only have one key. You can actually just do a parameter reset. If the module that has the security, has the paths, is not being replaced, give that parameter reset a try, and that may be all you have to do. Anyways, that's kind of a side note. But... This is something that you have to do in some cases. Even if you've programmed the keys correctly, the vehicle will not start until you do this parameter reset. So that's the third function, or I guess the second function that I do within the security functions is the parameter reset. All right. So that's step one. And the vehicle's not going to start until you do this stuff. So again, most people can figure this out, but uh, we've got a few other steps beyond this as well. So in addition to the keys, now again, these are just metal blade keys with a plastic head. There's no buttons on them. For these trucks, for this, well, for this specific truck, I had to learn the remote transmitters to the smart junction box. If I did not do this, if I did not actually train these two transmitters, and again, you got to have two for these, you can't, and it says this in the service information, you cannot just have one remote transmitter. You have to have two. If I don't do this, this is going to be part of that dome light that's blinking. And there's going to be codes set in that BCM saying that there's not remote transmitters programmed to that vehicle. And it's easy enough to do. You go in, you train them, you just press the buttons on the key fobs, and it'll, it will learn them. You can even do this with old used transmitters. Uh, that, that works just fine on this particular vehicle. That's actually what we did. We just used an old used one for the second one because he only had one. So you train those two remote transmitters to the BCM. That's one step that you have to perform. Now it does lay this out in service information. It tells you that you need to do this. It's part of the process, but some people miss this. They don't have two transmitters or they just don't do it. Well, you're going to get codes. You're going to get that flashing dome light. So the next step, there's more. <laughs> we have to do more than that. Uh, we have to train all of the tire pressure sensors to that new smart junction box. If you don't have four functioning tire pressure sensors on these vehicles, and this applies to the F-150s too, I've run into this, and you don't complete that TPMS relearn, you cannot turn off that dome light from flashing. Um, now there's a manual way to activate the uh, tire TPMS relearn to get it into the learn mode for the sensors and it's a series of turning the ignition on and off so many times and hitting the brake pedal it will say in the dash learn mode activated or, or train TPMS tires or something like something like that anyways you activate it and you need a TPMS tool you go around start at the driver's front go to the passenger front passenger rear driver's rear activate the sensors in series it'll say training complete on the dash and then you'll get your code to go away inside this junction box because there's a series of codes that exist in this control module until all this stuff is done and they won't clear and it'll say like configuration error and TPMS not learned it'll it'll kind of lay it out for you but one of the codes says it says like configuration error programming error so you may think you did something wrong well I guess you kind of did you didn't complete all the steps that's the that's the key here again this is all just reading information and following the directions on what you need to do now on this particular truck we've still got one more step to do actually two uh, you need to move the dimmer light switch all the way from off to all the way to full brightness and this is a step that it lays out in the scan tool for you now for this one I don't know if it'll keep the dome light flashing if you don't do this but I think there'll be a code but either way it's in there and so I'll do it it's easy enough to flip a switch but that all involves reading and doing exactly what the service info or even the scan tool tells you to do and then once you've done all of this stuff you go through and you clear the codes you run a self-test on the module should come up 
all good. And then you can move on with your day. You've programmed this thing correctly. But if you don't do all of those steps, particularly the remote transmitters on this one and the TPMS, the actual tire pressure sensors, four functioning sensors, learned to that module, it will not stop flashing that dome light. And that's the call I get is why is my dome light continually flashing on this thing? Well, it didn't get set up correctly after the programming. We didn't follow all the steps. And... You know, this sort of thing can be applied to so many different vehicles in so many different ways. If we, and uh, I bring myself into this especially, especially me, if we would just read stuff thoroughly and follow the directions, we can avoid a lot of problems because this is all laid out for us. Um, now, there's some other really smart guys out there that have helped me along the way and say, yeah, you got to do this stuff. You got to be prepared for this. But you want to read this before you jump into a job so you know what to inform the customer of. Hey, I got to have two keys. I got to have two transmitters. I got to have working TPMS sensors. And it's an upsell if you're in a shop. Um, but if you're mobile, you need to have all that stuff so you're not wasting a trip going out there and saying, oh, yeah, I can't finish this because you don't have this. Uh, you get all that stuff set up ahead of time, and then you can just go boom, bam, get it all programmed and Heck, you know, if you want to charge extra for all that, you know, the, all the extra steps, uh, because this, you know, this is a big process to do all of that stuff on this vehicle to make sure it's set up correctly. So anyways, that's what I've got for you today. That is programming a brand new BCM or Smart Junction box on a 2010 F Ford 250 Super Duty. And again, F-150 and other years are going to be similar, but there are variances, especially with the security and with the transmitters. It depends on the key style. This isn't exact for every one of them, but the TBMS issue is common across many models of this, of the Ford F-Series or the Ford pickups. So take a look at that, read your service info, and uh, stay busy out there. Thanks again for listening, and we'll hope to see you again soon. Yeah.